Hey everyone, Pi ASM. Welcome to my full video build of Hasegawa's 132 Fokker Wolf D9. So yes, this is the full build of this from start to finish. It's a much more condensed build. The full four-part 30-minute video build series is over on my Patreon if you want to go watch it. It goes a lot more in depth than this, but this is the basic build along the way. Like I say, if you want to see a lot more in depth, how I do techniques, going into it a bit more, you can become a patron and link down below. And uh, yeah, this is the first aircraft I'm going to properly build in five years um, and actually enjoy it as well. So get yourself a cup of tea, some biscuits, put your feet up and uh, away we go. And we're going to part start off by cutting all the parts off we need for our main cockpit assembly. So that'll be all the interior cockpit parts, the fake engine uh, parts, the fuselage halves, and the tail halves as well. Um, so go for your instructions, familiarize yourself with all the parts, cut them off, and then clean them up with our UMP sanders using a mixture of our thinny sticks and sponge sanders where needed. So nice, easy kit to build, not a high power count kit either. I've got a Quinta detail upset for this as well, so we need to use their instructions to see where we need to go with this as well. Um, we've got some surface detail removed for that detail upset, so we're using our UMP 180 sand to get rid of that. And then all our fake engine area here, we're going to build up. I'm just going to paint it all black to begin with, and then grey, and then detail paint it through the landing gear later on. So with everything built up and glued together, we're going to prime everything. So we've got some Mr. Surface of 1500 black, HPC I water at about 18 psi, and apply a couple of coats of primer to everything. So very simple basic assembly on the cockpit. It goes together really easily. Um, we're only going to lightly weather this aircraft. We're not going to go crazy on it. It's been my plan all along. The goal with this is to get past my mental block of building aircraft. So the quicker we can get through it, the simpler the build, the more chance we've got of seeing more aircraft from me. So I'm not going to go crazy on the weathering, um, but we are going to make it hopefully look a bit more interesting than a plain old bland plane. Plain old bland plane. We've got an interior grey now, um, which, which is RLM 66 from Mr. Hobby. Uh, it's a Mr. Color Color 116. And I'm going to put a couple of light coats down on all the interior parts. Now, the Quinta detail offset was slightly lighter, so I did lighten the tone at the end. Um, it was still too light at the end. The only downside to the aftermarket set, unfortunately, but it's just the way it is. Sometimes they are different colors. Uh, and you've just got to adapt and uh, overcome and maybe forgive sometimes and just move on with the build. So inside the fuselage halves as well, give a couple of light coats everywhere where it's going to be seen. Uh, as you can see, I've got a bit of white there I've added to the grey, just to lighten it a touch. And the key to detail upset is actually a water slide decal. So into water for a couple of seconds, a little bit of PVA glue on the surface underneath them. They're a 3D effect decal, so get them in position. And get a cotton bud, get all the moisture out and excess glue from behind and leave it to dry. And they're very effective. They do look very, very good. Same on the instrument panels as well. Three piece here. Get all lined up. And like I say, very, very good looking uh, instrument panel. You even get some little handles in there as well. They're a bit floppy because they're decals. They do harden up over time. And I glued those in with a bit of CA glue. And there we go. There's our cockpit all assembled and our detail upset in there too. And our side panels there as well. Like I say, big difference in the color, but not much we can do about that. So we'll just roll with it and crack on with the build. Glue the seat in place with a PVA based glue as well. And there are some belts included with the keen to detail upset, which to be fair, for decals, once built, look really, really good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, some light weather on the interior. We've painted the foot pedals silver as well. And we're going to put some Tamiya enamel-based panel line wash everywhere. Once that's dry, we'll remove it with a cotton bud. And just leave a lightly weathered cockpit behind. Quick fit into the fuselage halves, just to check how it all fits in. Very positive locating on this. There's two little lugs at the front, and it sits on a little step at the back as well. We can glue this in place with some extra thin. Yes, they are painted past, but the extra thin 
will glue them in. There's nothing structural here. The two fuselage halves will hold all this together in the end. It's just to hold it all together while we're gluing them in. And then the other side of the fuselage halves together. It's fit on this is absolutely fantastic. Very, very good kit. There's a reason I picked this kit to build. And again, make sure your little tabs inside fit in perfectly. And then we've got my Tamiya Plastiweld mix of glue, which I show on the channel how to mix. We're going to glue these parts. Now these parts can't be seen. They are hidden. There's some panels that go over the top that have natural panel lines on. This at the back though can be seen. So we need to do as good a job as we can on this scene. So to get some glue in there and squeeze it together. And on the tail assembly, holding the part upside down, loading the glue, the glue on the brush with a capillary action, carry it up through it. Give it a quick squeeze. Don't get any glue in your fingers like that. And then the landing gear bay, we can assemble underneath as well. Like I said, the fit on the kit, almost flawless. Absolutely fantastic kit. We got our dropped flaps in place. They're located in with three locating points. And again, a little dab of glue in place to hold those in. Quick squeeze. And then we can get our wing assemblies on and then just work our way around each one step by step gluing it in place so i tend to get the glue in the panel line gap or sorry the seam line gap push it together and then hit it again with the glue one last time and i'm working on a small section at a time working my way around getting all glued together and if we can get glue in anywhere i'll get it in there now you don't need a ton of glue don't go absolutely crazy if you get any glue runs on the plastic you're making more work for yourself And just hold it down. There's a little panel to go underneath each side as well. So they need a little bit of sanding to get them to fit properly. And then this whole section, you'll see now, fits in there. The trickiest point on this plane was there were two little tabs at the front there. In front of the front landing gear. Just there, they're probably the most awkward pieces on this. The wing roots are pretty good. Bit of a raised step one side, but nothing really to worry about. A little bit of light clampage on the back and we can glue this here now this is a natural panel line on the aircraft so we don't want to get any molten plastic squeezing out so we just need to hold it and then down the side as well we just add a little dab of glue all the way along the seam and just a little bit of positive force without going crazy you can just hold it until the glue grabs it like i say the fit of this kit absolutely fantastic there's a reason to pick this i knew it was a good kit and i knew it should be a nice simple build now, a few people have told me this seam on the wing route should be filled. I wasn't going that route. It's staying there for me. So I just let the capillary action of the glue carry itself along. A little bit of pressure while it all dries. And the jobs are good in there. And like I say, these little points at the front, probably the trickiest part to do. They need a little bit of pressure to hold them. But once held, they were good. And the cowling over the top of the engine, again, easy to do. Two halves of wheels to glue together not a fan of these i normally do replace but i didn't bother on this one with resin ones but glued together and sanded pretty easy the fuel tank really easy to glue together just a couple of dabs of glue and then the capillary action carry it around and then this intake here just assemble it glue it give it a quick squeeze job's done little panel that goes in the landing gear bay here a little bit tricky to get in place so i have to clamp it whilst it was glued and again, where all these panels meet, they're natural panel lines. So it's really good because you don't need to get any molten plastic in there. You just want to glue it, hence the reason for the clamps. So I'm like sanding now on the dry glue. This is probably about a day later where the plastic's all dried now. And we're going to get rid of our seam lines. We're not going to go crazy with the sanders. I've got a bit of masking tape there to protect the, sea, uh, the detail to the left-hand side. Once we've got that main seam line gone, we can hit it with the sponge sander very lightly just to blend it all in and then all the leading edges of the wings all the way around from the front to the back need to be sanded so just be methodical take your time going around just make sure everything's done you may need some filler this kit needed minimal filler literally a few pieces underneath on the panel lines and that little section at the front where i said about the leading edges meeting the fuselage just needed a touch of filler very little needed anywhere don't forget this little piece uh, under the front canopy as well. Just need to sand in back a touch. And then we've got some Vallejo putty here. And what we're going to do is it's where the natural panel lines are. They're just a little bit more pronounced than I'd like. 
So I'm going to pop the putty in. That This stuff dries unbelievably quick. By the time we've done all the front sections where we want it. We've got a moistened cotton bud, which I 100% promise I did not lick. I'm just going to wipe off as much as possible. And then using a pointed cotton bud, just kind of scribe in the panel line with it. And that will add a bit more of a panel line for us and fill it in at the same time. Same on the fuselage, uh, sorry, the tail halves as well. And to glue these in place, because I didn't want any molten plastic to come out, because again, it's a natural panel line where these join, I opted to use elastic bands to hold it in and then just the tension each side to get it to sit perfectly where I wanted it while it was glued. That way, when you glue it, you get no molten plastic and it sits absolutely perfect while it dries. And that panel line looks absolutely spot on when done. This was probably the most worrying part of this kit for me. I was thinking, how is this going to look? Is it going to look terrible? And you know what? Once it's done, you can't even tell it's there. Fits in absolutely perfect. No problem at all. So a little bit of glue all around the seam line. Let it set for a minute. And I just always hit it up one last time. Just go around to make sure it's all properly glued in place. And then leave that the hell alone while it dries. We get the propellers together. Easy enough to do. And then glue on the intake on the side as well. But don't knock the tail. Don't move it around. Leave it all alone. Until you get everything glued in place. So my Tamiya Plasti World Mix working really well. Makes the glue a little bit hotter, but it doesn't dry as quick. We've got a little bit of rescribing to do. So I've got my Holly Rescriber and some Dymo tape. Probably the easiest way to rescribe for me. So just a few areas to do. Not a huge amount, thankfully, because it is my most hated task of aircraft modeling. And then where you've rescribed, all on the leading edges where we sanded, all underneath. Hit it with some of your glue. Just a little bit, and it'll take away the sharp edge of the rescribe. We're then going to go around with our buffer, because unlike car models, we want this surface to be nice and perfectly clean. I don't need any primer to grip here for the high shine paint. Um, so we're just going to buff it all up, and I'm going to temporarily attach these cowlins to the front as well, so I can paint and uh, sorry, prime and paint it all as one lot. Uh, we cut the canopy off, clean it all up with our sanders as well. Very clean canopy to clean up, actually. Minimal cleaning. We've got an Edward mask set for this. Pre-cut, so you just pop those on. And the front canopy, we're going to tammy extra thin in place. So place it in. A little bit of thin, extra thin on the brush. Let the capillary reaction just carry it through. You'll see it wick under the glass. Do that all around. Uh, as don't load the brush up. You don't need a lot of glue on there at all. We can glue that in place. You'll literally see it wick up under the glass. Like so. And then mask in the rear canopy. Four sections per side. Just to infill all the areas. And then we can infill the center with normal masking tape. Now, we only temporarily want to attach this canopy on the fuselage, so I'm just going to put a few dabs of glue and glaze on there, which is PVA-based glue. We want to remove this later to position it open, but to spray it, we're going to close it so we get everything painted properly. So a few dabs of this either side, and that will glue it in place perfectly. As I said, this is the shorter condensed video of this. There is four 30-minute parts of this full build over on my Patreon. You can access by becoming one of my patrons. Uh, you get early access to all the videos, you get full access to all the builds, as well as this condensed one. All early access, up to a month early, uh, as well as other perks, and a weekly bench update as well. There's exclusive videos on there, and you can request reviews too. And there's an exclusive Facebook Messenger chat you can be added to with 70 other patrons, including myself, where you can chat and share some of your modelling stories too. We've degreased all the surface with some ProScale Paint degreaser. And we're going to prime the entire model with Mr. Hobby, Mr. Service F 1500 Black. This has been thinned with Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner, about 70% thinner to paint. We've got my Water HP, sorry, no, CR3 Airbrush 0.35 Revolution. We're at about 18 psi, and we're going to put a couple of like primer coats down until we've got full coverage, like so. Now, I tend to hold the upper part of the fuselage first. And do all underneath as much as I possibly can. 
then turn it around, grab it by the tail, do all the upper surfaces. The bottom will have dried by then. I can place it down and spray the tail and get it all nicely primed as well. This is the time where you'll see any flaws in your finish of any seam lines I haven't quite filled or any um, areas you've not rescribed properly. This is your time to fix it if you wish. If not, you can move on to painting. We've got the RLM 76 light blue underneath first. So a couple of light coats to this. I've sped this all up because it is a very long process. It was probably a full day of painting this to get all the camo how I wanted it. So we get all our RLM 76 underneath first. Like so. Again through the CR3 I water, 18 PSI, couple of light coats, covers over the black really well as you can see. We don't need to be purposeful here, we're just getting the base coat down, following our instructions on our decal sheet for the colour demarcations. And then we can start with our camo. So we go with the lighter colour first, the RLM82, which is Mr. Hobby122. Um, we're following our basic pattern on our decal sheet. You can see there on the top right. Just getting the basic camo pattern masked out or painted up and infilled. Then come in with the uh, larger areas and fill them all in. Again, don't be worried as any black shown through. It'll add to the uh, paint weathering later on. The sides are a bit more tricky to do. So take your time here. Just use your guide as a... A rough guide. I would recommend any colours you mix, you put in colour cups, like I've got at the back there in a medicine cup. Put a lid on it because you will more than likely reuse them later. We certainly will for our mottling and fading. And then once that camera pattern's down on the RLM82, we come with the RLM83, which is Mr. Colour 123. And we need to be more purposeful now with our camera pattern. We also need to be wary of getting any paint on our blue surface as well, because we don't want to have to retouch it back in later. We will because we will inevitably get overspray, but just try and be mindful of where you're painting and try and get your camo pattern as close as possible to it. Now, some of these splinter cams are hard edged on this one. It seems to be soft edged, so I did it freehand. Uh, great fun to do. It's my favorite part of aircraft modeling this, the painting. It's always something I enjoy doing. When you're spraying over the canopies, because there is a gap in the canopies, just be mindful and just don't be going too heavy with the paint. And don't be worrying, anything you do here is now fixable. If you put too much paint down in one area, you can fix it by using the older colour and vice versa. It is all fixable. So don't be getting too hung up on like, oh, I put too much there. You can pick the colour back up and then fill it again or add more of the blue, which is what I did in the end. I put the blue back in and just tidied up the edges of the green. We've maybe come down a little bit too low or gone a bit too far. Had a touch of overspray, which I did in a few areas. You can touch it all back up. Now we're going with some mottling on the side. We're going with the RLM 82 and 83. And we're trying to do random squiggle mottled effects here and there. Sadly, the more random you try and be, the more purposeful you are. So it's quite hard to do. But we're doing a mixture of both darker and light greens on the side. And once we're happy with that, we can come in with a lighter tone of each of the camos. We're going to fade all the panel lines, sorry, the panels themselves in the center. Like so. You see the faded effect there in the center of the panels. This is our paint weathering effect. There's many ways of doing this. This is the way I choose to do it. You can pre-shade, you can post-shade like I am. You can model underneath and then put thinner coats of uh, paint over the top. But for me, this is the easiest way. We've got a lighter tone of the RLM83 now as well, doing exactly the same, fading all the panels in between those rib sections of the ailerons, just to add some interest to make the paintwork look a bit more sun bleached. Now this is a very condensed version of this. This was hours of work. Like I say, there's much more in-depth videos on my Patreon. There's literally four 30-minute videos on building this aircraft over there, whereas you get, what, 36 minutes here. We've darkened up the RLM82. And we're going to highlight the panel lines now and then add some mottling in amongst those lighter areas of the panel centers. Like so. It takes a bit of airbrush control. This is where the iWater HPC Plus comes into a tone. Add about 10 PSI. We've thinned the paint a bit more now as well. 
So it literally added white to lighten it and black to darken each of the tones as required. And we kept each color in a medicine cup separate as well. So we can reuse if necessary. Because like I say, if you're not happy with an area, you can go back over it and adjust it. But all we're trying to do is add a bit of interest to the paintwork here and make it look a little bit sun bleached, which as you can see, is starting to come together now really well. So it does take some good airbrush control. And as I always say, building different genres of modeling will help you across the way because you'll find ways of doing things you don't normally do or solutions to problems you have. And it'll quite often push you to try, try different things you've maybe avoided before, like weathering or fading paint or rusting out a vehicle, things like that. There's not much I've not built over the years, so I'm more than happy doing what I'm doing. Um, but it's nice to get back to aircraft and nice to get to this stage because this is my favorite part of aircraft modeling. I absolutely love this stage of weathering, using the paint and then decaling and washes and what have you. It is good fun. And it's nice to get back past the point where I normally stall, which is the bodywork prime, the fuselage primed. I normally stop there. I can't get past it. So it's good to see. We've now got the original greens. Um, and we're going through all the faded and highlighted parts and we're just blending them in so they look a little bit less stark against each other just to give them a bit more visual interest and break them up a little bit we've masked off for the tail band and the rudder and the under cowl on the engine as well so the rudder and the under cowl are yellow we've got a yellow and black tail band to go on so I've sprayed some white underneath for the yellow and the white as well with some uh, Tamiya LP flat white, which is LP4, I believe. And then we've masked that off and sprayed the black. We've weathered the yellow and the white in the same way we did the um, other colors. And we have done the same paint effect under the aircraft as well. Now for weathering, I don't normally do a clear coat, but I did because this was a buddy build with Joe. We were building this step by step and Joe had never really built an aircraft before. He was using the Kit Hasegawa decal. So I thought, you know what? We'll give it a clear coat. So this is Mr. Hobby. GX UV cut uh, clear, thinned with a bit of Mr. Hobby leveling, then about 70%. A couple of light coats, and it gives us a nice sheen on the decals. Now, I bought aftermarket decals for mine. They weren't great. Some of mine felt a bit, as you can see on the top right of that bit of kitchen paper. So I had to use some of the Hasegawa markings, literally just the Balkan Cruises. The rest of the decals are the Eagle cows. I have put the swastikas stickers on. I know they can be a point of contention with some people, but... It's a historical marker and it should be there in my opinion. So they are staying on there. Um, the rest of the kit decals went on no problem at all. Just into the warm water for a bit. Get them in place. Get all the moisture out from behind. Standard decal procedure really. Um, and then hit them with the ultimate decal solutions. I think I use strong and extra strong on these. Like I said, I don't normally gloss before weathering the decals. I just did it because I was building with Joe. You can do it over non-gloss surface is perfectly fine as long as you paint smooth you'll do it just fine so it's a case going around follow your call out for your decals and get them all in place any of that have a panel line run through them once they're set in place i would cut them with a sharp scalpel hit them with some decal solution get it in the gap and then i like to stipple them with a brush to push them in that way when you add a wash later on it will hold a wash for you as well uh, some tricky ones like these wing walkway markers on the wings, obviously, uh, and lots of little stencils to put in. They've been drying overnight, and we're going to add a Tamiya panel line wash on here, enamel-based wash. I've mixed some black with the dark brown to give us a nice, real dark brown color. And we're just going to go round and fill all the panel lines in. Any raised areas will get it as well. Let that dry for 20, 30 minutes, and then we can come back and wipe it off. Now, this is one of those stages, once it's all wiped off, it makes a huge difference to the model. It really brings it alive. Looks absolutely phenomenal when it's done. Um, and bear in mind, I am only very, very lightly weathering this aircraft. This isn't a, a mission in showing how to build a weathered model or my skills at weathering or look at this. This model is to get past my block of building aircraft because I do really enjoy building aircraft. I've just got a weird mental block, no idea what caused it. And if I get this built, there should be more on the way. And spoiler alert, there is. I have a P47 I've bought. That will be on the way very soon. So, yes, this is what this is. It's going to be very lightly weathered. 
don't expect a lot. But as you can see, once the panel line comes off, you can see all the panel lines there. And it just brings the plane alive a bit. That with the decals looks absolutely fantastic. We're looking really good there. Not bad at all. So, obviously, we've got a gloss finish now. We want to seal the decals in and then enamel wash as well. So, we're going to go over now with some Mr. Hobby UV Cut Satin Semi Gloss Clear Coat and get rid of that high shine. I used to matte coat all my aircraft, but I think satin coating them is the way to go. I think it adds a bit more visual interest to them. Like I say, I want to seal in that enamel wash on the decals because I am going to put a filter over this in a minute. So, a couple of light coats of this, and you see the sheen's gone from the gloss. And we're left with a nice semi gloss finish. Like I say, this will seal in the enamel wash and stop it reactivating and seal in our decals from any damage from any subsequent weather when we do. Landing gears. Now, I didn't have the color for this. Um, so, luckily, I found the paint code and I mixed it with ProScale paint. So, uh, I forget the color for these now. It's a black gray for the propeller and the spinner. And the wheel is like a gray blue for the wheel bait. I forget the codes now. I've totally forgotten. Apologies. But brilliant. No idea if we're going to carry on doing military colors. Maybe it's something further down the line. But I'm glad I found the code because it was paint I didn't have. So it worked out win-win for me. Being the owner, one of the owners of ProScale Paints, I could mix my own military colors. We've masked off the center of the wheels with the mask set that came with the Edward window masks uh, that's been painted in that black gray color i'm masked it off now i'm spraying lp65 rubber black i've masked off my landing gear i do it a different way than everybody else i do it afterwards so a bit of tammy tape over the top and a sharp scalpel to cut it out inside our flaps as well and inside the rear landing gear door too it's a simple way of doing it i find it's much easier this way than stuffing padding in there to protect it and there we go that's those painted up they're looking good we're going to wash on those later on put that out of the way for safekeeping for now and now we can assemble our gears uh our landing gear now these are handed to so make sure you get the bits on the right way we'll put some burr metal foil on the strut itself as a little bit of uh visual interest We've got some decals on our aftermarket decal set that don't come with the kit, so we're adding those as well. And then I've got some Winsor Newton transparent white oil, and we're going to add a filter to the fuselage. So this will fade the paint a bit and blend everything together, make it a little bit more visually interesting, hopefully, anyway. And it's a case of putting small dabs of this all over the fuselage, working at a section at a time. So I'll do a wing at a time, upper fuselage, tail, elevators, etc., then underneath. Just putting dabs on and then getting some. I've got some Santador from Windsor and Newton. It's an odorless mineral spirit. A nice flat brush. I'm just going to keep working it backwards and basically take it off until it's nearly all gone. And that way it'll leave a nice filter behind. It'll fade everywhere, leave a nice hazy effect. And you can do as much or as little of this as you want. It's all in your eyes now, your weathering, how far you want to go. As I said from the beginning, I just want to do very, very lightly weathered. So wipe it off, dry the brush off, get a little bit more Sansador on there and just keep going it until you're happy. You want it to be almost visibly gone and then use your brush to get any panel lines out as well. With the landing gear, we've added a black Tamiya panel line wash. Well, actually, we've done the dark brown wash again, my bad. And just let it dry, remove the excess. With the engine at the front, it's a very vague representation of an engine, so I opted to brush paint it with Vallejo model color black. Uh, we'll dry brush it later with some gray or silver and then give it a panel line wash too. And then our exhaust, we've got some air res resin exhaust for this, which are much better than the kit ones. I'm going to rust these up. They've been painted in Mr. Service of black, and we're going to paint up with the live color rust set, which in my opinion is probably the best rust set you can get. I've always had good luck with this. So we're going to paint on the various tones, start with the dark brown rust color, paint the entire exhaust with this, and then dry brush it with the lighter tone of brown, and you'll instantly see the effect coming through. Then we'll work on to another lighter tone and give it another dry brush. And again, it starts to bring it alive. And then finally, a dry brush with the final tone, which will 
we're just going to do the ends and the edges on this not going to do the whole thing and yeah these are looking really good very happy with these we'll chuck a wash on these as well like so water base paints the light colors so they do dry really really quick and with the enamel base wash over the top we can let that dry and wipe off any excess later then with some bob's nice glue sorry with normal ca glue we can glue these in place test fit them to make sure they fit first which they did absolutely perfectly very simple to fit put yourself explanatory where they go they only fit in particular places like so so big difference over the kit part so really happy with those we put the spinner on the prop as well now i believe these planes can come with wooden or metal props so i guess you can do what you want to these i opted for wooden so we're going to do some light weather into this as well that is the key with this don't be disappointed for those watching uh it is going to be lightly weathered landing gear legs they literally slot in place which as i said in my full length video i'm glad i did because i dropped the box on it two days later and luckily the landing gear just popped out rather than snapping and was repairable just by pushing it back in there's a little support that's glued in place there and we can glue the rear section in quite easily as well with some CA glue. Get it all in place where it needs to sit and then line it up nice and straight. We've added a wash to the front section of the engine as well. Just wipe off any excess. I'm going to leave that full of wash. I don't want to wipe that off. And then some CA glue to get our propeller in place as well. There we go. Drop tank, I didn't drill the holes out to begin with, so I had to find them myself. And the way I did that was on the locating points of the drop tank, I put some wash. After the upper, I thought it left, it would go. That left a mark on the fuselage, and I drilled it and popped it in place with some CA glue. So a nice, simple fix. We've got the pitot tubes and whatnot now, um, and the machine guns to go in place. So... Just follow the instructions going through, stick everything where it needs to go, sticking the guns through. These have been painted in Mr. Surfacer Black, and then dry brush with some Vallejo Silver, just to give a little bit of depth to them. And then they're pushed in until they stop in the locating points. And then this retractable step on the side is popped in place as well. And we're going to give a wash to any areas we haven't given a wash yet, so the flaps and the landing gear bays as well. Some Tamiya LP flat black, which I think is LP3. We got some exhaust effects. And again, how you want to go here is up to you. How mad you want to go. I just want to add some basic exhaust effects using paint. So flat black, you can use pigments, oils, whatever you want to do. For me, I just did this. Is it right or wrong? No, it's just the way I chose to do it. Um, and obviously you can do this as you see fit. The weathering is in your eye. How you see it is how you want to do it. And for me, I was more focused on getting the build finished than going crazy with weathering. So, yes, that's the way I've gone here. So, nice control there. I want a HBC Plus. We can get some light exhaust staining in. So, we're going to cut the canopy off. We've got our scalpel underneath. Remember, we only lightly glued it on last time. So, we're going to take it off by scoring through. It pops off really easy with no damage whatsoever. Get a cotton bud to wipe off any excess glue. Then we've got the interior section here to glue them some Bob Smith's glue. So a little dab of glue in there. Canopy masks work absolutely perfect as well. They've all been unmasked. No problems there at all. Front one coming off too. Absolutely perfectly masked. And again, you can reuse these if you wish. And we are going to display the canopy open. So we're going to put some Bob Smith's there as well. We've got an antenna to go in place and some people are going to say oh this antenna should be dropped and you're more than likely right because i think this version would have drooped if it went back i wanted a taut so that's how i did it so i've used easy line rigging for the antenna added a couple of drops of ca glue painted them black for the resistors that are on there and there we go that is my aircraft pretty much done very very lightly weathered i'm going to reiterate that for those who are probably going to maybe comment on the video so i know we didn't do a lot of weathering i didn't plan to from the start I just wanted to get this build done and there we go one thing we are going to add though is some pigments to the wheels so we've got some ultimate sandy earth pigment here these pigments are unbelievably fine quality absolutely fantastic it's a little bit on a brush 
just wipe it on get a nice dusty effect on the wheels and then wipe off any excess you don't want nice and simple don't worry we put too much on like i have there it will literally brush back off no problem at all it's just going over it with the brush so you got as much or as little as you require and then we've got the navigation lights so these just slot into the end fitted in absolutely perfect a little bit of pva glue on the end of those one on each side And then we get some Tamiya clear red and clear blue on a micro brush and just touch it to the end. And there we go. That's it. She is done. First aircraft I've enjoyed and built in five years complete and hopefully the start of many more to come. I've already got two more on the stash. I've got the Trumpeter P47 and Tamiya P51D in 30 second scale for the fourth time. Um, but very happy to get this off the bench. I thoroughly enjoyed this build. And here's my finished result. So... Not overly weathered at all, but I'm happy with the result. I think it's an interesting looking plane. It's a beautiful plane. I do like the D9. Uh, this kit was almost flawless. I can't think of any issues with the kit at all. I only added the keen to detail set on the interior, the exhaust, the mass set, and some decals just because I wanted a different version. Uh, more than happy how this turned out. I could have gone a lot further with the weathering, but as I said, I just wanted to get a nice plane done off the bench get that mental block done and then move on with the next plane build which will be the 30 second scale trumpeter p47d which will be on my bench hopefully pretty soon but like i say really enjoyed this it's nice to get an aircraft off the bench in such a long time i've got plans for the rest of the year with different builds which i've gone to into on one of my patreon bench updates uh, and like i say you can get full access to these video builds just four 30 minute full video builds on this particular build a lot more in depth showing up a lot more how things were done by becoming a patron in the description down below you can pick your applicable tier you want you get all the full build videos you get early access up to a month you get an exclusive friday bench update every week there's an exclusive facebook messenger chat there's loads of exclusive videos on there as well you can get access to uh, and you get to take part in picking future builds and reviews and you keep me being able to do this as I do. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. I really enjoyed this. And I highly recommend this build to anybody wishing to uh, dabble into 30 second scale aircraft. It was a really easy build. Not a high par count. And yet a great result in my opinion. There we go. All done. Uh, what can I say? Great fun. Really, really enjoyed it. I set out from the start not to over weather it as I said through the build. Didn't want to get too hung up on the weathering. I just wanted to get it built. We've done some light paint effects, a few light weathering effects on there. Nothing drastic at all. And what can I say? The kit, absolutely fantastic quality. Can't fault the kit at all. Um, great detail upset for the interior. The wrong colour, a bit of a shame. But other than that, the Kinter sets, I'd use one again if I wanted to. Uh, resin exhausts are a must, as are the um, windscreen masks as well. The, the canopy masks are really worth it. The decals were a bit hit and miss, some fell to bits, so yeah, a bit disappointed in them, but overall, yeah, glad I added all the aftermarket and made a slightly different aircraft. And there we go. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did making it. Uh, leave a comment in the comments, let me know what you think, because hopefully you're going to see more aircraft from me. I've got a 30 second scale Trumpeter P47 I've bought and a 30 second scale Tamiya P51, which is the fourth time I've bought this kit now to try and finish it. So you will see those at some point on the channel, the P47, hopefully pretty soon. And as I say, if you want to become a supporter, you'll get a month early access in all the videos. They're always out a month earlier on Patreon. You'll get access to all the video builds. All the car builds have at least three parts of them, 30 minutes long. This one's got four on this one. Uh, you also get access to the condensed build as well. Access to exclusive videos on Patreon. There's an exclusive Facebook Messenger chat for all the patrons too. And I do a Friday uh, bench update every week on Patreon just for supporters only. Um, so if you want that, it's in the description down below. If you want to send the other donations, the buy me a coffee and a PayPal me link there as well. Links to everything in the description of the video, all everything to do with ISM, Pro Scale Paint, UMP Retail, all the live and the bench stuff for all the day, all the, the live streams through the week and on a Friday evening. Uh, details of the off-air hangout. 
There's links to my Scalemates, my Etsy store, my Amazon store, all the products I use in the videos. There's everything in there. And there's an email address if you want to get in touch with me as well. And if you're not subbed to us, make sure you sub to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Click that bell notification and leave a comment. Love to hear all your views on the build. Let me know what you thought. And uh, hopefully we'll be back with another playing build pretty soon. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. Take care, everybody. Enjoy your day. Take care. Bye-bye.